Hi there, and welcome to the Mystery Pool Show with me, Jack Penn. Today, my guest is a distinguished scholar, fellow of Oxford University, and former Mandarin, Sir Grayson Smythe. Hey, Sir Smythe, how's it going, man? A very good morning to you, young man. Or should I say, good afternoon. It's cool. Uh, here in San Fran, the sun's still up. It's awesome, man. They say the smog is the reason we have such good sunsets. I don't mean to come across as rather irksome, but would you mind if we discuss something a little less trivial than the weather? Are those handcuffs I can see behind you? Uh, uh um, yes, I, I, I was a former officer of the law, you see, and, well, you know, the boys sort of gave me a send-off and let me keep them as a memento, or a keepsake of sorts. What, like four pairs of them? And aren't they attached to your bed? Margaret, <coughs> would you be so kind as to shut the door so the camera doesn't peer into our chambers? And is that like a truncheon I can see? No, that that belongs to my wife. Margaret, be a dear, would you, and take Victor next door so he's out of sight. Her truncheon has a name? I say, would you mind changing the subject? This is all rather personal, and I'm not comfortable discussing it. Okay, so uh, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about sex magic. It would be both imprudent and indeed lacking in decorum were it to I indulge in such... Banter. So, Sir Grayson, what can we talk about? Uh, most anything you like, young man. Except truncheons called Victor. Yes, that's correct. And sex magic. Yes, that too. You know, <clears throat> that was why I brought you here on the show, and seeing as those two topics are out of bounds, I'd like to talk to you about something else, uh, secret societies. Certainly. Be my guest. Well, for one thing, I would like to know, just so our audience is clear, do you belong to a secret society? Look, I'm awfully sorry to cut this short, but something's come up. I really must dash. Uh, toodle pip. Uh, well, it seems like we lost Sir Smythe there, former MI6 Mandarin, Detective Superintendent in His Majesty's Constabulary, and Fellow of Oxford University. Oh, that's such a shame. We were getting on so well. Okay, well, that's just how it goes. Look, Wittoria, I'm going to bring in Max here, as he has some knowledge of that subject. Hi, Jack. Do you belong to a secret society? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. I said, do you belong to a secret society? I'm really so very sorry for this, but the line really is rather faint. I said, do you belong to a secret society? No. Are you being honest with me? A society with secrets, yes, but a secret society, no. And yes, I am being perfectly honest with you. I am not at liberty to s discuss such things, I might add. Anyway, what was your thesis on when you studied your master's degree at university? And what might your research tell us about secret societies? Let us be clear. There is no connection whatsoever to the society which Sir Grayson Smythe and I, sorry, to which I belong to, and the ancient secret societies in the classical world, that is, if they ever existed. What do you mean by that? Well, there's one thing about secret societies. What's that? Well, they're secret. So you can't tell us anything about them at all? No, I'm afraid not. Why not? As I mentioned before, young man, I am not at liberty to discuss such things at all in any capacity. You can't discuss your master's degree thesis? Oh, my apologies, I thought you meant the society with secrets to which Sir Grace, sorry, to which I belong. Ancient secret societies, yes, most certainly. So, for our audience, could you tell us what kind of evidence you found of such secret societies existing? Sure, the evidence is rather thin on the ground, I'm afraid. Why is that? Because they're secret? Okay, so what can you tell us about them? Look, I don't really feel comfortable discussing this subject in public. Do you mind if we discuss something else? Okay, sure. How about sex magic? I'm flattered, really I am, but I'm spoken for, and besides, I prefer my trains to run to Paddington, not Waterloo, if you catch my meaning. 
No, I, I meant the subject of sex magic. Okay, I'm going to bring in Wittoria here because she obviously has something to say about that. Well, the subject of sex magic is a funny one. Why is that? Because, well, this particular area of magic is most often kept under the seal of secrecy. Are you being serious? Absolutely. One of the meanings of hermetic is that it's kept hermetically sealed, watertight. Is there any reason you're not at liberty to discuss this area of magic which you're passionate about? Indeed there is. Not only will magic no longer be effective if I do, but I'm at risk of the entire spiritual world turning its back on me. Okay, I get it. So, if you can't say anything about it, who can? If I may? Certainly, Max. In the writings of Iamblichus, in his Egyptian Mysteries, it is said that to profane the sacred mysteries can have potentially serious repercussions, not just legally in the ancient world, but also in a case of divine retribution. So really, my hands are tied, like Sir Grayson Smythe's often are. I believe it's more likely Margaret's hands that are tied, poor girl. So is she like, I'm well and stuff? She'll be back on her knees in no time. Well, that just about wraps it up for today. I'd like to thank my guests, Sir Grayson Smythe, Max Latham, and Wittoria Suleiman.